Okay, so before we start our uh, proper lesson, no? So let's go back to our course outline. Okay. So yon, um, I think magbili ka pa ko about sa accounting principles, when accounting concepts and principles, and then yung accounting equation, and then yung types of major accounts. Pero more on review na lang to. Kasi baka nakalimutan natin eh, yung mga past lessons. Pero make sure lang na, ayun, na, na, na napanood natin no, yung naging lesson sa mga chapters na to. Kasi ito yung mahalaga eh, bago tayo makapag, uh, bago tayo damiretso sa mga chapter 9, 10, and 11. At least meron tayong idea no, ng basic na uh, mga concepts and principles. Yan. Kasi mahalaga yan, no? Mahirap kasi mag-analyze pag wala tayong idea about the concepts and principles, kung paano ginagawa or paano gagamitin yung mga accounting equation, and then yung uh, mga types of major accounts. Okay? So for today, mag-recap lang tayo, no? So yun, um, walo lang yun nandito, no? Pero ilan ata tayo mga nasa 20 plus? 20 plus ata tayo. Yun. And um, may mga activities tayo na, meron ako mga activities na isa-send outside Kuiper. So yun, kaya better na ano na pumasok kasi hindi lahat ng activities isa-send ko sa Kuiper. Meron, kasi mag-resolve din problem na tayo, so you need to uh, do the debit and credit using your paper or notes, and then picture nyo, then send sa um email or i-attach nyo. Pag nag-send ako ng uh, activity via essay, i-attach nyo lang doon yung picture. Okay? Then doon ako mag-check. Okay? So, yun. Debit and credit na tayo. Okay. So, yun. Reminders. Yan. Ulit. Yung accounting concepts and principles, yung mga basic concepts and, uh, and principles of accounting. And then yung accounting equation natin, which is yung asset is equal to liabilities and, and plus equity. And then yung mga types of major accounts, for example, yung mga assets, liabilities, um, owner's equity, and under, and under um, owner's equity, yung mga revenue or income, expenses, and then as well as the charge of accounts. Okay. So, unahin natin yung accounting principle. So, ano lang to, parang review lang to. So, hindi ko na siya ganun ka, uh, di ko na siya ipapaliwanag masyado ng uh, malawak. Okay. okay, so accounting concepts and principles. So, uh, these are actually, um, there are, actually there are a number of accounting concepts and principles based on which we are, we prepare our accounts. This GAAP lay down accepted assumptions and guidelines. Kung baga, um, itong accounting concepts and principles natin, ito yung mga um, guidelines natin no, on how we do the debit and credit. Kung kailan natin iya, kung kailan natin iya account yung mga transactions or ano yung mga method na gagamitin natin, mag, kung ano ba yung denomination na gagamitin natin. So dito natin malalaman no, kung ano ba yung mga rules and regulations, guidelines na um nagdadating din pag nagawa tayo ng mga transactions. Okay, so yon yung mga users of financial state, uh, statements. So nataka na natin to nung chapter 2, I think. Yon yung mga users of information. I know it's chapter 3 yon chapter 10. Ayun. Okay? Okay, so meron din limitations uh limitations of conventional financial statements. Ayan. So, for example, yung mga companies may use different methods of valuation, cost calculation, and recognizing profit. So, pag nasa higher year na kayo, malalaman nyo yung mga types of uh, methods of valuation, cost calculation, and then recognizing profit. So, for example, um, yung nag account tayo or debit and credit, pinaka-common is yung mga expense method or asset method. Okay, so later on, ipapalibanan natin. Pero actually, nangitakal ko na yun ng last day, yung asset method siya yung expense method pag um, nag-debit and credit tayo. The balance sheet does not reflect the true worth of the company. So again, pag, binigyan, pag nilatagan tayo ng 
balance sheet and then na-check natin na mataas yung cash nila but doesn't mean na maganda yung ano maganda yung performance ng isang company. Dapat uh, we also should consider um, yung mga income statement and yung other financial statements. For example, yung mga cash flows. Ganun. So, hindi lang merely yung balance sheet. So, when we say balance sheet, dito nakalagay yung mga asset liabilities and equity. Okay? So, financial statements can only show partial information about the financial position of an enterprise instead of the whole picture. Okay? So, yung financial statements, pinapakita lang naman dito yung mga financial aspect ng isang company. Not merely the whole company kasi meron namang mga non-financial aspect. For example, yung attitude ng manager, um, yung attitude ng owner, no? yung mga ganun. So, hindi yun kasama sa mga, um, hindi yun nami-measure or pabaga hindi yun kasama sa financial aspect. So, yung financial statements, hindi niya talaga pinapakit yung pinaka uh, whole picture or yung buong kabuoan uh, status ng isang company. So, yun, for the accounting concept, actually, marami tayong accounting concept and then mas marami pa kayong may encounter during your higher year pag nga kung nag-BSA man kayo or business, uh, yan, um, BS accountancy. Ayan, so, or even, I think, yun, business accountancy lang ata yung makaka-encounter ng accounting concepts. And uh, yung other business students ata hindi na kayo. Okay, so ito, ayan, unti lang to, pero mas marami pa tayong uh, concepts no, na may encounter pag nasa higher year na kayo. So ito yung pinaka ano, basic kumbaga or parang pinaka main concept na meron na pwede kong itakal sa inyo. So first, yung business entity, money measurement, going concern, historical cost prudence or conservatism, materiality, objectivity, consistency, accruals or matching realization, unif uniformity, disclosure, and relevance. Okay? So, and actually, yung mga i-discuss ko sa inyo, parang main, ano lang to eh, parang um, definition lang, no, ng concepts na to. Pero sa higher year, um, mas marami pa siyang ipapaliwanag per concept, no? Especially pag on, during, ano, ata yun, auditing theory, yan, ipapaliwanag pa talaga nila isa-isa no? kung paano ba gagamitin itong mga concept na ito. Okay, so for now, since basic accounting pa lang naman kayo, so basic definition lang naman yung ibibigay ko. Okay, for like, um, kung paano natin siya maiintindihan, uh, parang yung mga overview lang ng per concept na ito. Okay, so when we say business entity, Ayan, the business and its owner are two separate existent entities. So, di ba, pag kunyari, meron kayong, uh, meron kayong tindahan, no? meron kayong sari-sari store. So, dapat separate yung um, journalizing or yung journal books ng business nyo doon sa inyo. No? So, dapat kunyari, um, nagbayad kayo ng korean for your personal use. Dapat hindi nyo yung inerected sa sari-sari store nyo. Okay, so yung anything na ginasas mo para sa sarili mo, hindi yon expenses ng, ano nyo, ng business nyo. Okay, so kung kuyari kumuha ka ng, kaya may sari-sari story ka doon, may sari-sari story kayo, tapos kumuha ka ng candy doon, dapat i-record mo yun as expense. Okay, so hindi mo pwedeng hindi i-record yun, no? Kahit na sabihin mong for personal use mo yun, kasi nabawasan mo yung amount ng candy. Pero kung nara, for example, um, Uh, meron kasi mga business na yung tipong kahit yung panonood nila ng sinis, sinasama nila sa expenses nila, which is hindi yun, ano, mali, na mali, mali yun. Okay? So, pag nanood ka ng sinis, hindi mo pwede nga-record yung expenses na yun sa business mo. Okay? So, bakit, no? Bakit kaya ganun? Siyempre, para makita natin yung totoong nikita nung isang business. Okay? Misan kasi iba, kaya nilalagay nila yung expenses. Siyempre, pa yung income nila pag naglagay ka ng expenses, parang kumbaga mababawasan yung totoong income nila. So, unti yung binabayad nilang tax, okay? Pero hindi dapat lahat ng expenses ilalagay natin. Lalo na kung wala namang kinalaman sa business. So, ang purpose na yun, ang purpose nun is for you to know yung the real picture ng business nyo. Kung profitable ba siya, ayan. Okay, gets ba natin? Or for example, ikaw, kunyan, may business ka and at the same time, meron kang um, another job. 
'yun. Dapat magkaibang ano 'yun, magkaibang uh, book 'yun or magkaiba silang um, set of uh, journal entries. So hindi mo pwedeng kunyari uh, sumeldo ka, hindi mo pwedeng ipasok 'yun sa business mo, no? So personal income mo 'yun. Okay? Kasi pag ginawa mo 'yun, hindi natin makikita kung ano ba totoo, yung totoong performance nung sari-sari store mo. No, kung yung pari, pati yung sarili mong um, transactions, nila-record mo doon. Okay, so for the money measurement, uh, which is uh, connected din sa consistency, when we say money measurement, um, ito yung mga paggamit natin ng peso sign or um, dollars no or other denomination. Kaya hindi ka pwedeng gumamit ng kilometers, hindi ka pwedeng gumamit ng centimeters. No? So yung um, ginagamit natin measurement or yung denomination is yung mga peso sign, dollars, gano'n. And then for the consistency, kung peso sign ang ginamit mo sa first year mo ng financial statement, hindi ka pwedeng gumamit ng dollars for the second year. Unless otherwise, um, nag-disclose ka ng... Um, nag-disclose ka na gagamit ka na ng ibang dollars, no? Ng ibang uh, denomination. Pero as much as possible, kung pesos sa inyong ginamit mo sa unang financial statement mo, then, at consistent yon sa next years. Ayan. So, this is not that all transactions of the business are recorded, recorded in terms of money. So, again, hindi tayo pwedeng mag-record ng um, kilogram, centimeters, ayan, ilang pieces. Ngayon, na bumili tayo ng ballpen, no? Tapos ang nirecord natin doon, 10 pieces sa ballpen, hindi pa din ganun. Ang nirecord natin, kung magkano ba yung 10 ballpens na yun. Okay? So, ano ba yung purpose nun? Ano bang purpose nun? Kaya, bakit kailangan money? Kasi parang makita talaga natin yung totoong amount as a whole. Hindi pa din, hindi natin kasi may equity eh, or hindi natin matototal kung iba-iba sila na measurement. Iba-iba sila ng label. Okay? So, going concern mean the, means that the business will continue the operational existence for the foreseeable future. Okay? So, financial statement should be prepared on ongoing concern basis. Okay? So, as long as may business na ayan, hanggat hindi yan nag, uh, nag-liquidate or hindi na talaga yan nag-ooperate, or I mean, hindi siya nag-liquidate, kumbaga parang hindi na talaga siya, um, ngayon na nag-liquidate, binenta nyo na yung mga asset nyo, kailangan gumawa kayo ng financial statement. So kahit hindi kayo nag-ooperate, ayan, pero hindi nyo pa na-liquidate yung mga assets nyo or hindi nyo talaga tinapos yung business, kailangan yung, um, kailangan yung i-record or gumawa ng financial statements. Okay, so for example, this year nag-operate kayo and then nagkaroon ng pandemic, hindi na kayo nag-operate, kailangan nyo pa rin gumawa ng financial statements. Okay, kailangan nyo pa rin magpakita ng financial statements. Ayun, yun nga lang siguro di kayo magbabayad ng tax kasi wala naman kayo income. Pero kailangan nyo pa rin gumawa ng financial statements. Hanggat hindi naliliquidate or naibibenta yung mga asset, hindi kayo nag-declare ng bankruptcy, hindi na ipamigay sa mga owners yung Um, yung mga equities nila, yung mga ownership nila. Okay? O yun yung tinatawag na going concern. Kahit hindi nag-ooperate yung business, kailangan nyo pa rin gumawa ng financial statements. Okay? So, historical cost, assets should be shown on the balance sheet the cost of purchase instead of the current value. So, yun, kunyari, um, uh, bumili tayo ng bahay ngayon, for 5 million. Tapos, uh, for this year, naging 10 million na siya kasi, di ba, ay bahay at lupa. Yan, naging 10 million na siya ngayon. Kasi, di ba, lumalaki yung value ng bahay at lupa eh. I mean, yung lupa pala, no? Tumataas yung value nun. Uh, Nag-appreciate nag, uh, yung value nun. So, ang mangyayari, hindi natin pwedeng i-record yung 10 million. Kailangan ang i-record natin kung magkano natin siya nabili. Okay? So, for example, din naman sa sasakyan, no? Pero nabili natin siya ngayon for um 2, 2 million. Yan, nabili natin sa akin ng, ng 2 million. And then, for the next year, syempre na nadidepreciate yun eh. Nababawasan yung value nun. Kasi pag ginagamit natin yung isang bagay, nababawasan yung value nun. No, from time to time, nababawasan yung value nun. So, ang hindi lang nababawasan ng value ay um, mga artworks, yan, mga paintings, hindi nababawasan yung value niyan. 
and then um, flood. Okay, so alalahanin nyo, no? Kaya na pag nag, uh, nag board exam na kayo. So yung, uh, yung mga bagay lang na nadidip, na na-appreciate or hindi nababawasan ng value ay mga artworks like paintings and then um, land. Okay? So other than that, yan, nadidip-shape na yan. Like yung uh, bahay. Nagan yung lupa lang yung hindi na, ano nga, di nadidip-shape. Ah. Meaning, pag yung ibig sabihin ng depreciation, nababawasan yung value. Yan, sa sakyan, nadidip-shape din yan. And ano pa ba? Um... Mga laptops, mga cellphones, yan. So, you can search din naman sa Google kung ilan yung, uh, kung gano'ng katagal yung economic life nila. So, usually, pag mga equipment, like, um, siguro like, uh, yung mga machines na malalaki, siguro mga five years yun. Tapos yung mga malilit naman na equipment, like cellphone or laptop, yung economic life nun is two years. So, yan, mga two to three years. Okay. So, yun. so again, pag nag-record tayo ng amount ng isang ng transaction, i-record natin is kung, kung magkano natin siya binili, no? Despite na nagtumaas yung value niya or bumaba man yung value niya, yung current value niya, ang i-record natin is kung magkano natin siya nabili. Okay? Yan. So acquisition cost. Okay, so yun sa higher year, no? hindi lang yun, basta acquisition, acquisition cost, like kung magkana natin siya nabili, yung cellphone, magkana natin siya nabili, um, like 5,000 pesos. no? So sa higher year, um, naram pang mga kinoconsider na amount eh, para malaman kung ano yung acquisition cost. So for example, bumili ka ng aircon at magpa-install ka. Uh, so pati yung installment nun kasama sa acquisition cost. So hindi lang yung value ng aircon yung gina-record mo, pati yung value ng installment, yung delivery, Kaya gano'n record mo yun no, sa um, value nung asset na yun. Okay? So, for now, no, di naman natin masyadong aalalahanin yun. So, yun. For the historical cost, again, kung magkano natin siya mabili. Okay? So, yan. Sa servitism, revenue and profits are not anticipated. When we realize profits with reasonable certainty are recognized in the profit and loss account. Okay, so meaning lang nito, no? Um, meaning ng conservative, parang mas ina-anticipate natin yung loss rather than yung um, benefit. Okay, so kumbaga in real life, no? Mas uh, parang sa mga accountant kasi mas ina-anticipate natin or mas ina-expect natin yung mga worst scenario rather, rather than those um, best scenario. So sa accounting, pag na meron tayong mga transactions, hindi natin, ano, kumbaga parang, hindi natin ina-anticipate kung magkano agad yung kikitain natin. Okay? So, yun, um, record lang natin yung mga kinita natin once na nareceive na natin yung um, yung cash and at the same time, na ibigay na natin yung, ano, yung service natin or yung product natin. Okay? Pero pag sa mga expenses naman and then losses, nare-record agad natin yan or ina-expect agad natin yan ahead of time. Okay? So, kunyari, um, bumili tayo ng mga ball pens and uh, office supplies. Yan. Usually, ang um, ginagawa ng mga businesses, nare-record agad nila yan as expenses. Even though hindi pa nila nagagamit yung mga office supplies na yun. Okay? So, yung usual na ginagamit pag nag pag nag um, nag-journalize yung mga businesses, expense method yung ginagamit nila. Okay? So, yun, ina-expect or ina-anticipate agad nila yung expenses. Even though hindi pa nila na nagagamit yung mga supplies na yun. Okay? So, even the, I think, even the salaries, eh. Ayan. Though, um, kumbaga, though hindi pa nakakapag-work yung mga employees, mga January lang, no, ina-anticipate agad nila kung magkano ba yung ipapasweldo doon for the whole year. No? That is why nakakapag-compute agad sila ng tax na, uh, na i-deduct doon sa mga employees nila. Okay? So again, we say conservatism, yeah, we anticipate loss rather than profit. Okay? So even in, in your life, di ba, meron kasi mga tao na uh, mas ina-expect nila yung ano, eh, mga worst scenario rather than yung mga best scenario. It's because 
siguro takot silang masaktan, ganun, or takot silang, um, ayun, takot silang masaktan, ganun. Parang ganun, parang ganun lang din siya, no? Yung iba namang tao, ina-expect agad or check agad na kung ano yung mag- nga ng ibang tao kasi tin- sinacheck agad nila kung ano yung mga best scenario. Like, uh, magkano kayo yung tikitain ko for this month tapos saka sila bibili, no? And then, um, hindi pa dumagating yung sweldo, ubus na agad, no? Sa isip nila, ubus na agad. Kasi inanticipate agad nila eh kung, ano yung mag- kung magkano yung tikitain nila. Okay? So, yung usual na behavior ng mga accountants, yan, mas ina-anticipate namin yung loss rather than the profit. Okay? So, yun. I wish na ma, na siya, na, ano to, ma-update na siya sa real life or sa life, no? no? So, again, uh, we anticipate loss rather than profit or the benefit. Okay? So, for example, ayan, um, And so, provision of doubtful debts should be no. So, for example, nagpautang din kayo, no? Nagpautang din kayo ng magkakaroon kayo ng accounts receivable kasi nagpautang kayo ng ano eh, ng pera. Okay? So, usually, marami, meron pang other accounts other than accounts receivable, no? So, yung ibang accountants, pag once na nakapagpautang sila, Um, nage-expect agad sila na yung 10% ng mga pinautang nila hindi na babalik. Okay? So, nag-anticipate agad sila na merong pera na hindi maibabalik sa kanila. Okay? So, yun. Um, meron tayong provision for doubtful debts. Yan. So, ina-account agad to eh. No? Or even, siguro among after after months, ina-account agad nila yan. So, once na nagputang ka, um, after months, meron silang, uh, uh, meron silang journal entries na debit and credit na ina-account nila na itong pera na to hindi na to babalik sa akin. Okay? Pero pag bumalik naman, no, kanyari 10%, um, yung 10% ang pinautang mo and expect mo nang hindi babalik sa'yo, pero at the end of the year, nagbayad naman pala yung umutang sa'yo, then you can just reverse that um, journal entries. Okay? So, materiality. Yeah, imat- Uh, immaterial amounts may be aggregated with the amounts of a similar nature or function and need not presented separately. So, materiality depends on the size and the nature of the item. So, when we say materiality, ito yung parang ano eh, uh, yung amount ng isang asset na malaki yung effect niya sa, ano, sa isang performance ng financial statement. So, kung yari, um, eto common to sa common problem to ng mga um, low, lower year for example nag journal entries kayo tapos nag balance sheet na nag worksheet na kayo and um upon calculation at the end of the calculation meron kayong missing na 1 pesos ay 1 peso i mean meron kayong missing na 1 peso so usually syempre pag mga lower lower year pa lang kayo kailangan yung hanapin yung nawawalang piso Okay, pero pag sa work na, ayan, yung pag nasa real life work na kayo, meron namang mga threshold na tinatawag yung mga businesses. Meaning, um, pag piso lang naman, we can let it go. Or 10% naman, 10% of the whole um, asset, we can let it go naman na. No? So, ito yung tinatawag na material and immaterial. When we say immaterial, pag within the threshold or Um, pag sobrang liit naman ng ano niyan, liit naman ng amount na nawawala and then uh, wala naman tong ganun kalaking effect sa uh, performance ng company, then we can let it go. Okay? Pero pag uh, more than 10% and it will affect the real performance of the uh, financial statement of the company, then we can ano um, we can find that missing amount. Okay? So pag mga Um, pala sa lower years or mga basic accounting, pag may nawawalang piso, kailangan hanapin. Okay? Pero pag mga nasa higher year na yan, then um, hinahayaan na yun. Kung baga immaterial na yun. So, ano yung reason kung bakit may um, mga materiality and materiality? Immateriality and materiality. Okay? So, merong mga uh, immaterial amounts na hindi na hinahanap. It's because hindi na siya, parang hindi siya worth it hanapin. Okay? So, kunyari yung, kunyari, um, gumagawa tayo ng napakalaking uh, gumagawa tayo ng financial statements ng isang malaking company and then may nawawalang piso. 
Okay, so yung time na hahanapin mo yung piso na yun, sobrang laking uh, daming hours na, no, di ba? Sobrang habang time na hahanapin mo yung piso na yun. Okay, so parang hindi na siya worth it. So, hindi na siya worth it na hanapin pa yung piso na yun. So, yung iba nila let go na yun. Okay? So, basta pasok naman siya sa threshold na sinat nung company or nung client mo, then pwede mo nang hayaan yun. Okay? Pero pag material na siya, kumbaga parang may effect siya, yung nawawalang amount na yun is um, may effect na siya sa performance ng isang company, then that's the time na kailangan mo siyang hanapin. Ayan. So, yan. For example, then, mga small payments such as stage, stationary, and cleaning expenses should not be disclosed separately. They should be together as sundry expenses. So, meron din naman na tinatawag ng mga miscellaneous na expenses. So, for example, um, ano kasi tayong mga expenses na maliliit at iba-iba siya, no? iba-ibang um, asset or expenses. So, pwede mo na siyang ipasok sa sundry expenses, lalo na kung maliit namang, namang amount. Pwede mo na pagsamasamahin yun sa tinatawag na sundry account. So, yung ito yun, yung account title nun is yung sundry expenses or sundry account na yung Okay, so next naman, nagats ba yun? Next naman is yung objectivity. The accounting information should be free from bias and capable of independent verification. So the information should be based upon verifiable evidence such as um, invoices and or contracts. So dapat um, i-create tayo ng opinions about the financial statements. It should not be uh, biased, no? So, dapat kung ano talaga yung nakita nating performance sa business na yun, then yun yung dapat natin i-disclose sa mga um, shareholders or those who need the, the information. Consistency yan, parang ayun, connected din siya sa mga, uh, connected din siya sa money measurement. Yan, kung ano yung method na ginamit natin from the start, yun lang din yung gagamitin natin sa mga next years. Okay? Kasi baka... Um, pag iba kasi method or measurement ng gamit natin, magugulo yung ano natin, eh, magugulo yung interpretation natin dun sa performance ng financial statements. Okay? So, for the consistency, for example, um, expense method din ginamit mo for the first month, dapat um, expense method din yung gagamitin mo hanggang katapos na nung December or nung year na yon Okay? So, um, kung calendar method naman yung ginamit natin, dapat calendar method din yung gagamitin natin next year. So, unless otherwise, dinisclose mo na gamit kayo ng other method and uh, merong mga certain requirements bago ka makapag, ano eh, bago mo mabago yung mga methods na yun. Okay? So, yun yun. So, when we say calendar method, ito yung ano, um, January to December. Pag sinasabi naman natin yung uh, fiscal method or fiscal year yung ginagamit, calendar year or, ayan, yung calendar year again, January to December. Pag fiscal year yung ginagamit, meron kasi yung ibang, yung ibang bansa kasi fiscal year yung ginagamit nila. So meaning, uh, magbibilang ka ng 12 months. Basta 12 months siya. So yeah, kahit na nag-start pa siya ng middle of the year like August or July, magbibilang ka ng 12 months. So, for example, um, itong si company ang gamit niya fiscal year and then nag i start yung accounting year nila ng July. So, magbibilang ka na July, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July. Okay, so, ngayon, July yung start na accounting nila, then dapat ang tapos nun is June. Okay, basta within 12 months. O kapag ganun, no, pag fiscal year yung ginamit, then dapat fiscal year din gagamitin next year for the consistency. Okay, so next naman is accruals. Okay, so when we say accrual, revenue are recognized when they are earned, but when but, but when cash is received. Okay, so yan, um, connected din siya with the conservatism. When we say sa revenue, no, uh, i-recognize lang natin siya pag na-earn na. 
not when we receive the cash. Okay, so ano ba meaning nun, no? Anong nasabing na earn na natin pero pero uh, i-recognize natin siya pag na-earn na, not when we receive the cash. Okay, so not all the time na pag nakaka-receive tayo ng cash from the customer, it doesn't mean na na-earn na natin siya. Kailan nangyayari yun? For example, merong nag-advance payment na customer sa inyo, no? pero hindi niya pa naman na-perform yung service niyo. Hindi niya pa nagbibigay yung product. So, hindi yun revenue. Okay, so meron kasing cases na nag-advance payment si customer, pero um, hindi pa natin na-perform yung service and then binawi niya yung pera niya kasi nga uh, matagal ko yan, matagal yung service eh. Then, um, then makawala siya sa revenue, no? So, ayun yung ano na, reason behind that. Okay? So, pag revenue, na-recognize lang natin yung um, kinita natin once na na-perform na natin yung service natin or naibigay na natin yung product na ino-offer natin. Okay? So, hindi hindi yung ano at time na na-receive natin yung cash. No? Kasi merong mga customer again na nag-advance payment. Okay? Kasi nga, hindi pa nilang bawiin yung pera hanggat hindi pa natin na-perform yung service natin or yung doc na ino-offer natin. Okay, next, expenses naman. No? When we say expenses, ayan, uh, expense are recognized as they are incurred, not when cash is paid. Okay, so yan, um, not really connected with the uh, conservatism na kaninang na-mention kanina. No? So dito naman, pag, when we say sa accrual naman, yan. I-recognize lang natin yung expenses once na nagamit na natin siya. Okay? Pero usually, hindi talaga ito uh, madalas ginagamit. Eh. Yan. Kung conservatism tayo, ayan, um, pag nag-accrual, uh, nire-record natin agad lahat ng expenses natin, lahat ng possible expenses natin, even though hindi pa natin siya nagagamit. Okay? Pero at the end of the year, yung mga na-recognize natin expenses na hindi na, na, na at the end of the year, hindi naman pala natin nagamit. Yun. Pwede siyang makonvert into um, assets, no? So, for example, nagbayad tayo ng rent. Yan. So, di ba usually advanced yun, no? Yung rent. Um, kailangan, yung iba nga, uh, one year, no? Na nagbabayad ng rent. Okay? So, for the January, nagbayad ka lang for the whole year. Yan, for example, um, 2,000 yung rent mo doon sa store mo every month. Tapos ang binayad mo na is 24,000. Okay? So, nirecognize natin yung expenses na yon And then, nagbayad na tayo. Okay? Nabayaran na natin yung 24,000 na yon and we record it as rent expense. And then, pagdating ng July, biglang nagsara yung business mo. Nag-liquidate ka na, nagsara na siya. Okay? So, Um, yung natirang 6 months, mayroon, uh, June, nag nagsara na kayo. Yeah. So, yung um, July to December, kailangan mong ibalik yun as um, asset, part ng asset. Okay? So, yung gana-record lang natin expenses is yung from January to um, uh, January to June. Ayun. Okay? Nagats ba natin? So, another example, um, mayroon, uh, Uh, kunyari, example naman, um, ganun ulit, rent ulit. Nag-rent kayo ng store ulit. And then, nag-start yung payment nyo ng June. Yan. So, June, 2010 per year. So, nag-bayad ulit kayo ng good for one year daw, sabi nung, sabi nung may-ari or ng landlord. Okay? So, nag-bayad ulit kayo ng 24,000. Okay? Pero kasi, di ba, um, June nag-start, June... June to December, like, ano tayo, seven months, am I right? June to July. O, tama, seven months yon, seven months. So, yung seven months lang i-record natin as expense. Kasi di pa naman natin nagagamit yung other months. So, pagdating ng December, ayan, since 24,000 yung record natin as expenses, ibabalik natin yung iba as part na ng asset, no? Kasi syempre, hindi pa naman natin nagagamit yun eh. That's ba? Let me know kung, kung medyo uh, hindi pa gets. Okay? Okay pa naman tayo? Yes, sir. Okay. 
Ayan, so yun yung dapat nating alalahanin, no? Kapag nag, uh, nag-journal entries tayo. Ayan, so problems in recognition of expenses. Yan, maraming ano eh, maraming tayo sa problems when recognition, uh, in the recognition of expense. Pero, mas better na, um, baga parang mas better na, pag ganyan na may business na kayo, i-anticipate na agad lahat ng expenses. Then you can just reverse or do the adjusting entries at the end of the year. Yeah. Okay, so let's uh, discuss natin to. Recognition criteria for the expenses association between cost and effect. Expenses are recognized on the basis of direct association between the expenses incurred on the basis of, the, of a direct association between the expenses incurred and revenues earned. So for example, sales commission should be accounted for the period when the products are sold, not when they are paid. Okay, so, merong mga expenses na hindi agad nire-recognize. Okay, so, yung dito naman sa ito, immediate recognition, if the expenses are expected to have no certain future benefit and are without future benefit, they should be written off in the current accounting period. So, for example, stock losses, advertising expenses, or research costs. Okay, so, ito yung mga hindi natin na expect na, ano eh, na mga expenses. Okay, so ano ba yung mga pwede natin record at the first year? For example, kung, kung from the last year na garant na kayo, then you can um, recognize agad sa January pa lang yung expenses nyo for the rent. Mga utilities, ayan, yung um, tubig, ilaw, you can already recognize those um, expenses agad. Kasi yun talaga yung usual na living expenses nyo. Even the salary expense, yun, you can already recognize it um, on the first month pa lang. Realization, ito, parang recognition din siya. Revenues should be re recognized when the major economic activities have been completed. Like what I've, uh, like what I, I have said, yun, um, yung mga income or sales or um, revenues, na-recognize lang natin siya once na na-perform na natin yung service or naibigay na natin yung mga um, goods and the products na ina-offer natin. Not when we receive the money or the cash. Yan. So, merong mga um, ayun, sa uh, pang-higher year na rin kasi ito, yung mga, mga long term contracts, like uh, merong yung inaabot ng ilang years yung ano yung isang project for example ano uh, for example yung mga construction di ba um ilang may merong mga times na so pag sobrang laki ng project ilang years siya inaabot so merong bang dapat ba i-record natin siya at the end of that contract like ilang years so mga ganung scenario meron silang mga percentage na tinatawag Okay, kung kailan nila i-recognize yung um, revenue. For example, pag 20% na yung project na yun, 20% completed na yung project na yun, saka natin nila-recognize yung revenue. Okay? So, pero pang higher year naman na yun. So, huwag na natin masyadong isipin. Pero may mga ganong scenario. Okay, so disclosure. Meaning, ito yung ano, um, meaning ng disclosure, kapag merong mga, meron tayong nakita ang, um, uh, tawag dito, meron tayong nakita, no, doon sa financial statement na yun, about sa performance niya, either um, it will impact the business, uh, for example, losses or profit, then we should state that in the uh, financial statements or yung, kumbaga yung opinion natin. Okay, kung, Either maganda pa siya or not, kailangan natin i-disclose yun. Or sabihin, pre-state dun sa um, financial statements na yun. Yan. Especially for those um, all material no and relevant information. Like, laking impact yung amount na yun as a whole. Okay? Uniformity. Ayan. Um, ito naman about to sa uh, parang... Ano rin to, um, connected din siya sa consistency. 
naman. And uh, pag sa uniformity naman, ito yung ano, yung uh, paggamit natin ng types of reports. So for example, meron kasi report na um magkatabi yung asset and the liabilities and equity. Meron namang um isang para horizontal siya. Like pag asset sa itaas, sa baba naman liabilities and equity. Okay, so kung ano yung unang uh, format ng report na ginamit mo, then ayun din yung dapat na gagamitin mo sa uh, susunod na taon. Okay? Okay, so different companies within the same in the industry should adopt same accounting methods and treatments for like transaction. Okay, so same industry, like for example, um, mga manufacturing, mga merchandising, and then yung soul. So, may kanya-kanya din silang accounting treatments or accounting titles. Okay? So, yun. Yun yung uh, reason kung bakit mas maganda kung uh, ma ano, ma ma distinguish natin kung kung anin ba doon yung single, yung partnership, and then the corporation. Kasi iba-iba din sila na ginagamit na accounting methods and treatments. Yun. So, Kahit magkakaiba sila ng company, pero pare-pareha silang single proprietor or um, uh, iba pa yung mga merchandising din na single. So, dapat ano, pare-pareha sila ng accounting accounting methods and treatments. So, for example, um, merchandising na single, yan, iba -iba, iba't ibang company na merchandising and uh, merchandising na single, then dapat para para sila ng method na ginagamit. Okay? So bakit kailangan ganun? Bakit kailangan yung mga um, same industry para sila ng accounting method and treatments na ginagamit? Okay? Bakit kailangan para din sila ng format ng financial statements? Because para mas maging maganda yung um, kung, um, pag uh, kukompare natin sa kanila. No, kasi kung iba-iba sila ng method na ginagamit, then we can compare it eh, kung sino ba yung mas magaling, mas magabi performance ng isang company. Ay, medyo magulo yun, no? Kaya ganun. Relevance, meaning the financial statement should be prepared to meet the, the objectives of the users. Okay, so relevant information which can satisfy the needs of most users is selected and recorded in the financial statements. So again, no, depende sa users of information kung anong klase or format na uh, financial statements yung ipapakita mo. So for example, within the internal lang naman, then you can um, disclose yung naging performance ng production sales, ganyan, para uh, makita ng mga internal um, users natin kung paano ba may improve yung productions or may improve yung performance ng company. Okay? So, ipag mga shareholders naman, meron din silang uh, sariling format din na ipinapakita for those users. And kung uh, doon nila ma-assess kung mag-a-additional uh, mag investment ba sila or ibibenta na nila yung investment nila or um, ayun, kung magiging consistent ba rin yung investment nila. Okay? So, any question regarding our concept and principles? And Wala uh, naman. Wala naman. Meron bang part na hindi naintindihan? Ayun. So, basic lang naman tayo doon. Okay. So, again, no, yung pinakamahalaga sa accounting concept and principles natin, yung recognition or yung realization. Okay. So, yun. Again, um, at ng conservatives, we anticipate the loss rather than yung profit. So, pag nag-recognize tayo ng revenue, i-record lang natin once na na-perform na natin or naibigay na natin yung product. Okay? Pag sa expenses naman, usually talaga, pag nag-expense method tayo, um, i-recognize na natin lahat ng expenses, possible expenses ng isang company. Once mentioned naman din sa problem. And then, um, i-reverse natin or gagawa tayo ng adjusting uh, entries once na hindi na yung lahat na na recognize natin expenses or parang inassume natin na nagagamitin na natin siya parang nag-assume tayo na magagamit natin yun eh at the end of the year meron palang parts doon na hindi naman natin 
na gamit, then we can reverse it and um, just uh, give it back to the asset account. Okay, so next naman, yung accounting equation na. Okay, so when we say accounting equation, asset is equal to liabilities and equity. Okay, so lahat ba kayo familiar na dun sa tatlo na yun? Asset, liabilities, and equity? Pwede kayo mag-thumbs up, no? Once na tingin nyo familiar na kayo kung ano ba yung pinag-iba ng mga tatlong yun. Kasi dapat uh, by this time, alam nyo yung pagkakaiba yun. Thumbs up. Feel nyo um, confident na kayo or um, naiintindihan nyo yung pagkakaiba ng tatlong yun. Okay, so nakikita ko dalawa pa lang yung thumbs up. Si John Forbes and then si Samantha. Um, si Samantha. Okay, how about the others? I think si Lauta, ano, uh, si, 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 si Angelus, feel ko, gets niya na yun eh. Yan. Yung asset, liabilities, and equity. Okay. okay, so yun, before we start, ano nga ba yung asset, liabilities, and owner's equity? So when we say assets, ito yung um, uh, resources na meron ng isang business na feel niya mag-benefit siya in the future. Okay, so ano yung mga example na yun? When, so, when we say asset, ito yung pagmamayari natin, eh, asset. Uh, for example, bahay, um like cash accounts receivable ito yung something na ano na mag magbe-benefit tayo in the future okay yung liabilities ito yung tinatawag na obligation natin sa mga third parties so for example utang yeah, usually naman pag liabilities utang eh pero iba't ibang klase ng utang pwedeng um, accounts payable when we say payable utang yon no natan tayo yung obligation bayaran yung mga third parties. For example, mga loan loans payable, when we say loans payable, ano naman 'yun? Um utang sa bangko. Yan. So, when we say liability utang to, obligation sa obligation natin to the other or third parties. Owners equity, ito yung ownership. Ownership to ng ano ng ayan, ownership, ownership ng ng mga owners. Ayan. Okay, so I think uh, sabihin ko itong chapter 8 at chapter 7. Okay, so for the accounting equation, asset, liabilities, and owner's equity. Again, asset is equal to liabilities and owner's equity. So again, asset, these are the resources that the entity owns in order to derive some future benefits. Ayan. So, ito yung mga madalas na ginagamit in the normal operations. Ayan. So, liabilities, claims of the external parties from the entity. Some of these are in the form of obligation to do some service or even do something. Ayan. Basically, these are debts or utang. Okay? Owner's equity, it reflects the residual claims or net assets of the owners of an entity. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so here, no, using the um, asset liabilities and owners equity. Magkano kaya yung owners equity? Yan, sabi mo, 120,000 daw yung asset, then liabilities is 20,000. Magkano yung owner, owner's equity? Ano? 100,000. Okay, so ganun lang siya. Madali lang. No? Lagi lang ating alalahanin yung, ano na to, yung equation na to. Okay, so pag-asset naman is equal to liabilities and owner's equity. Yung liabilities natin is 60,000. Owner's equity natin 50,000. Magkano kaya yung assets? Okay. 
You can type dun sa chat box. Ito, 100,000. Ayan, and then so forth. Madili lang naman to. Okay. So, yun. Uh, ito na. So, ito yung mga example ng assets natin. Like cash, accounts, receivable, supplies, prepaid expense. Meaning when we say, sinabi na prepaid expense, ito yung mga expense na nabili natin o nabayaran natin, pero hindi pa natin nagagamit. Okay. So, ito yung, uh, dito babalik, no? Kung gano'n nag-recognize tayo ng mga expenses at hindi natin nagamit at the end of the year. So, dito natin ibabalik, no? Magiging part na siya ng prepaid expenses natin, which is part ng asset. Inventories. Inventories, ito yung usual na binibenta talaga natin. No? Kung gano'n may sari-sari store kayo, then ito yung, ano, yung mga hindi niya naibenta, pagiging part ng inventories. Equipment. Yan, yung mga machines na ginagamit natin, kung yan, napang nag-create tayo ng product, ayan, yung mga equipment, gano'n. Land and building, oh no, of course, familiar na tayo kung ano yan. Yung furniture and fixture, ayan, um, para mas ma, ano nyo, mas, mas ma-differentiate nyo yung equipment sa furniture and fixture. When we say equipment, ito yung uh, nagpa-function, Okay. Yung furniture and texture, ito naman yung mga asset na hindi nagpa-function. For example, um, mga upuan, yan, table. So, yung mga yun na hindi naman nagpa-function, pero part ng asset natin, ayun yung mga furniture and texture. Ano ba yung mga equipment na nagpa-function? For example, um, yung ina-operate natin. For example, computer. Mga machinery. Yun, yun. Yes, printer. Yan, part ng equipment. Okay? So, ano naman yung, yung pinag-aiba ng supplies and the inventories? Okay, so ito ko inventories, magiging part naman to ng sales natin. Okay, merong mga natitirang gamit. Um, kaya na merong natirang tayong mga, mga gamit at the end of the year. Ito yung mga binibenta natin na natira. So, magiging part siya ng inventories. Yung supplies naman, ito, part naman to ng admin. No? Ito yung mga, kanyari, um, supplies na tinatawag. Ito yung mga binili natin na ginagamit natin for admin, administrative. And for example, mga stapler, um, tape, mga papers, ball pens. Ayan. Um, na natira, no? Na hindi natin nagamit for that, um, for that year. Ayun yung mga natira. Okay. Okay, so when we say naman accounts receivable, dapat familiar na tayo dito eh. Accounts receivable, ito yung may ito yung um ina-expect nating pera, no? Kasi may nagpautang tayo. Ito yung ina-expect nating pera na babalik sa atin. Okay, let's go na to liabilities. Check na natin. Okay, so diba we have already discussed yung asset. Okay, so under ng asset, meron pang current asset and non-current Asset. So when we say current asset, um, ito yung ano, uh, within the normal cycle, of no, normal operating cycle. Ibig sabihin, itong mga asset na to, um, magagamit natin siya or nagtatagal siya within uh, one year. Okay? So dapat naging familiar lang kayo no, kung ano ba yung part ng current asset. So for example, yung cash marketable securities, mga temporary investment na nagkatagal lang within one year, and short-term investments, yeah, not more than one year. Receivables, maraming times na receivables eh. So, mga collectible, collectible from customer, clients, and other person for goods and services or money given. Okay, so for example, accounts receivable, yan ang pinaka-common pinaka no, na receivable natin. Okay, so when we say accounts receivable, ito yung mga collectibles natin or yung in-expect natin, makokollect natin uh, from the um, third parties like customer, clients, and other person without 
any formal written promise to pay. Okay? Nagkaroon na ng promise to pay. Nagkaroon na ng promissory note. Kaya nga tinawag na promissory note. Promise and sorry. Yan. Kaya ganun siya. Promissory note. Um, ano na yun? Notes receivable naman tawag na. Pag meron ng written or formal written um, contract na, na nag-expect ng collectibles, then ano na yun? Uh, notes receivable na yun. Okay? So, in, in the... Uh, in contrary naman, kunwari tayo naman yung may utang and then gumawa tayo ng for, formal um, written promise, then tayo naman yung may notes payable. No? Utang, tayo naman yung may utang in the form of uh, notes payable. Right. Okay, so yung contra account, yung accounts receivable is yung allowance for doubtful accounts. Okay, so when we say allowance for doubtful accounts, um, ito yung mga um, nag, nag, parang gumagawa na tayo ng allowance no? or nag-expect na tayo na merong partial ng accounts receivable na hindi natin ma-receive. Okay? So, again, for the basic um, concept and principles, conservatism na tinatawag. Okay? So, anticipate loss rather than profit. Okay? So, pag nagka-utang tayo, meron agad partial. Usually, 6 to 10% ina-expect ng mga accountants or ng business na hindi na nila masisingil pa. Okay? So, meron tayong allowance for doubtful accounts. Sometimes turned as allowance for bad debts. Yan. It's a contra asset account used to record accumulated balance customer accounts that are doubtful of collectible. So, it reduces accounts receivable if it remains unaffected at the end of the accounting period. It should be emphasized that it is not an asset rather than contra-asset account. Okay, so, na-reflect yung part pa rin siya ng asset, pero ano na siya, negative. Okay, so, pa nagkaroon na tayo written formal, uh, formal written promise, then most receivable na tawag doon. Okay, so other receivables such as accrued interest. Ito yung, kunyari, um, may savings tayo from the bank. And then, um, syempre, nag-expect tayo na magkakaroon ng interest. Especially kung malaki yung sinave natin. So, meron tayong accrued interest, receivable. Ayan. So, meron din yung advance, advances to officers and employees. For example, um, mag na ano ba tawag doon nagbali bali ba tawag doon pag kunyari nag ano nagka-cash advance yung mga employees natin yan magiging part din siya ng asset no kasi kailangan bayaran niyo ng employees sa inyo eh okay so then sir si Babola pa yung sulit pag may stocks tayo and then yung kunyari may shares kayo kunyari may shares kayo sa Jollibee and then every december um kumita naman si Jollibee then uh, magkakaroon ka ng dividends receivable. Okay? So, parang, kaya dahil may shares ka sa Jollibee, may potential sila ng, ng income na receive mo din. Through dividend, uh, dividends receivable. Inventories, ayan, are assets that are held for sale in the ordinary course of business. So, ito yung mga uh, asset na binibenta natin. Okay? Paid expenses, yeah, expenses paid, recorded as asset for they are used or consumed. So, pero usually, hindi na tayo, uh, mas better na hindi tayo gumagamit na, ano to eh, parang kung nag-record agad ng paid expense, uh, parang pag January pa lang, nirecord na natin siya as asset. Then, ang tawag ng asset method. No? Pero, mas better na pag ang ginagamit natin is expense method. So, itong prepaid expense, kanyari nag-expense method tayo. Um, at the end of the year, saka lang, mag, saka lang natin itong gagamitin, itong prepaid expense na account. No? Saka lang siya magre-reflect sa, ano, sa journal entries natin at the end of the year. Pag nag-a-adjust na tayo. Kasi uh, expense method tayo. Eh. Conservatism, again, we anticipate loss rather than profit. Yan. So, ano ba yung mga expenses, mga prepaid expenses? So, for example, mga 
paid rent, pay insurance, be paid advertising, and then stationary bulletins, erasers, and uh, envelopes, and other supplies not yet used. Okay. So, non-current asset. So, uh, when we say non-current asset, ito yung mga uh, asset na natatagal more than one year. Okay? So, yung mga long-term asset to na tinatawag. Okay? So, for example, mga fixed asset like property, plant, and equipment. Okay? So, pag gumawa tayo ng uh, pag gumawa tayo ng ano, ng financial uh, statement, ang usual talaga na ginagamit na account title is property plan and equipment PPE na tinatawag. Okay, so these are in uh, these are tangible assets which are held by an enterprise for use in production or supply of goods or service for rental to others or for administrative purposes and are expected to be used more than one accounting period. Okay, so for example, land building equipment, machinery, uh, furniture, and textures, like chairs, lighting pictures, or wall decors. Ayan. So we just need to, uh, know, to uh, be, be familiar with these account titles. Okay, so yeah, mga delivery equipment like truck, ups, vans, and port goods. Then um, store equipment like cash registers, weighing scales. Traditional na to eh, equipments, di ba? Yan, mga nag, um, yan, na, nag, ano siya, nag-function. Okay. So syempre, um, kung ang accounts receivable, merong account, uh, account, full for, uh, account for the full accounts, Meron din contra asset itong mga ano na po itong mga um non current asset natin. Okay, so go lang ano um uh, diyan. Then sige na itong mga non current asset na to. Meron din silang contra asset account. For example, accumulated depreciation. Okay, so again, diba nga sabi ko itong mga non-current asset na ito, nababawasan yung value niya per year. Depende rin sa accounting period na ginagamit ng, uh, ng isang company. No? Pwede, ta pwede tayo mag-recognize ng accumulated depreciation every quarter kung every quarter nag-re-report nag ng financial statement yung isang company. Okay? Pero usually, uh, per year to So, um... Since uh, itong mga non-current asset is nababawasan yung value niya, yung, I mean, value kung kumbaga parang um, amount equivalent nung isang asset na to, uh, syempre, gagawa tayo ng, na, uh, ng account na, na way, no, para mabawasan natin yung value niya. Okay, so pag sinabi natin accumulated depreciation, ito yung value na nabawas doon sa asset na yon. Okay? So, the accumulated depreciation is a contra-asset account representing usage of asset or expired cost of the asset to, pre to the present. Okay, deduction from the appropriate fixed asset account. Okay, so other than this um, furniture, and, um, furniture and fixed tour, meron pa tayong mga non or property no longer used in operation at plant facilities which have been idle for an extended period or those abandoned but not physically retired. These are idle assets. Pero oh, usually, hindi ko ginagamit. Walang ganit. Ayan, hindi naman ito masyadong ginagamit na ako. Okay, any question, guys? Wala pa namang question? Ano po? 
Okay. okay so I think uh, break muna tayo mga 10 minutes. A simple question, or a tough one. It's a question for our children. Okay, so I think, ano na lang, um, continue na lang tayo next, uh, next week. Okay, ang review natin. So, ang um, next na tatakal natin is yung liabilities and equity. Okay, so yun. I think, um, ayun, I think, ano na, uh, we can end the discussion, no? So, ang um, kulang nga lang natin is yung liabilities and equity. Okay? <clears throat> Yan, yung review ulit natin ito. Okay, so do you have question, guys? Okay, so if you... If you don't have any question, na, then you can go. Okay, so thank you, everyone. And next week, na lang ulit. So liabilities and equities tayo next week. Goodbye. Thank you, Puma. Okay, thank you. Bye. Thank you.